welcome back keep your snack bowl aside put your mind all your focus over this lecture and let's proceed to know something about pyrimidine synthesis de novo synthesis of purine we have seen now same way pyrimidine nucleotides are also synthesized by de novo synthesis as well as salvage synthesis pathway so what are the pyrimidine nucleotides we have already spoken about it cytidine monophosphate uridine monophosphate or thymidine monophosphate so as per dna or rna uracil or thymine will be present or absent similar to purine synthesis here also the different atoms of the pyrimidine ring is obtained from different sources like n1 c4 5 and 6 n1 c4 5 and 6 they are obtained from aspartate c2 from bicarbonate that is respiratory carbon dioxide again and n3 from <coughs> glutamine amide nitrogen so again the amino acids and respiratory carbon dioxide building the pyrimidine also now coming to overview of de novo pyrimidine synthesis from different simple metabolites the first build the pyrimidine ring here there is a difference between purine and pyrimidine the purine ring is gradually built but here first the um, free pyrimidine ring is formed and then subsequent molecules are attached and the final pyrimidine nucleotides are synthesized so after four steps orotate is orotate is obtained and to it prpp here the similarity between purine and pyrimidine synthesis so prpp will be utilized here also and the first pyrimidine nucleotide that is omp orotate monophosphate will be synthesized subsequently the other nucleotides like uridine monophosphate uridine diphosphate uridine triphosphate they will be synthesized from utp we will get ctp these are the few differences between purine and pyrimidine that the first ring is formed and then the rest of the things are embedded on it and after the first pyrimidine nucleotide is formed first uridine triphosphate is formed from which we get ctp and ttp that is thymidine triphosphate is built or synthesized in some other way that we will be discussing later on then uh, as i was telling you the pyrimidine ring synthesis completed first then it attaches to ribose 5 phosphate unlike purine uh, ring formation and this is the entire pathway of pyrimidine synthesis so not to panic again we'll go step by step we begin with carbon dioxide that i had shown you as bicarbonate in the beginning so carbon dioxide plus glutamine plus atp that is energy is required and the enzyme is carbamoyl phosphate synthase 2 now can you recollect where you have heard about this cps yes correct recently you have studied about urea cycle and the first step of urea cycle needs cps1 enzyme so we get carbamoyl phosphate to that aspartic acid is attached and then in presence of aspartate transcarbamoylase we get carbamoyl aspartic acid then in presence of dihydroorotase we get dihydroorotic acid remember this product 
dihydro orotic acid then in presence of dihydro orotic dehydrogenase we obtain orotic acid so this is one of the main product or the uh, juncture product you can say from which different other things will be synthesized so now what happens to this here you can see the ring is formed and to this prpp is attached and what is prpp that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate pyrophosphate is released phosphoribosyl group is attached to this orotic acid to form orotidyl monophosphate fine now this orotidyl monophosphate will be acted upon by orotidylic acid decarboxylase carbon dioxide will be released as the name suggest from the enzyme we can make out carbon dioxide will be removed and we get ump the first uh, the subsequent nucleotide that is uridyl monophosphate then further in the presence of kinase and expenditure of atp we get udp so udp utp all these are now easy so we begin with respiratory carbon dioxide glutamine atp and a juncture element or juncture product orotic acid is formed from which the first nucleotide that is orotidyl uh, orot orotidyl monophosphate is obtained then subsequently we have got ump or and it utp now uh, we have got utp utp again it requires here you can see the uh, difference uh, utp will be acted upon by ctp synthase and we get the cytidylic triphosphate directly we get ctp fine so now this <coughs> this is peculiar because uh, we are not getting cmp cdp ctp but directly from utp we are getting ctp likewise in presence of ribonucleotide reductase and in presence of nadph we get dudp that is deoxyuridine diphosphate now you can well guess uh, that it is going towards the thing that is required for dna because deoxy things will have to be incorporated into dna so from there we will get dump then in presence of n5 n10 methylene tetrahydrofolate dihydrofolate will be removed and we get tmp so now you can make out we have got substrate or the desirable nucleotide that is thymidine monophosphate for dna synthesis now you can well understand why folate is important for dna and rna synthesis understood so they are contributing towards purine and pyrimidine synthesis that's why if folate is lacking then we get poor synthesis of dna and rna and then you can uh, think about the megaloblastic anemia causes fine as i was telling you the cps1 and cps2 what are the differences between this two enzymes this usually comes as a short note so cps1 that is found in urea cycle is present in mitochondria whereas cps2 is in cytosol in urea cycle it is found whereas it is found in cps2 is found in pyrimidine synthesis the source of nitrogen is ammonia here whereas here the nitrogen um, source is glutamine fine and here we have nag n acetyl glutamate as the 
allosteric activator whereas here no such activator or regulator is required. So th this is about the comparison between two CPS 1 and 2 enzymes carbamoyl phosphate synthase enzyme. Now <coughs> we have seen UMP gives rise to UTP and CTP. This nucleoside monophosphate kinases are utilized to form this final nucleotides. Then the same thing what I was explaining with the diagram is just written here fine. Now that we have spoken about the pyrimidine synthesis it has to be again highly regulated like purine synthesis. If unchecked growth occurs or unchecked synthesis occurs that is also a burden to the body. So, everywhere that should be a control be it any metabolic cycle or in our lives is not it ok. In animals the regulation is basically at CPS 2 enzyme that we have been discussing UDP and UTP that is the end products they inhibit the enzyme whereas ATP and PRPP the uh, initial product uh, or the addendum of uh, to the, the pyrimidine ring PRPP will activate it and ATP also will activate it. UMP and CMP competitively inhibit OMP decarboxylase. So, orotidyl monophosphate decarboxylase where carbon dioxide is released that step will be inhibited competitively by UMP and CMP. Then aspartate transcarbamylase the step 2 will be feedback inhibited by CTP but activated by ATP. So, since ATP is being required in the initial steps it is activated whereas it will be feedback inhibited by the end products. But in prokaryotes ATC uh, that is aspartate transcarbamylase that is the second step is the main regulatory enzyme which is allosterically inhibited by CTP like the animals ok. So, this is the overview of the entire regulation apart from that the this first three and last two enzymes of the pathway are regulated by coordinated coordinate repression and derepression. That means at genetic level their synthesis or transcription of their specific gene is inhibited by certain factors that is lifted off that is called as repression. If it is lifted off then it is called derepression fine. So, 5 out of this first 6 enzymes they reside on a single multifunctional polypeptide and um, they form a multi enzyme complex. Likewise, the last two enzymes also OPRTS and OMP decarboxylase they are also present as a single functional complex. Now, this initial uh, three enzymes CAD taking the first initials from these three enzymes that is CPS2. Uh, ATC and DHOS the multi enzyme complex is formed which is uh, whose gene is regulated at transcription and translational levels. So, transcription you rem remember that is from DNA to RNA will be formed. So, either that is regulated or checked or translation that is synthesis of this final enzymes which are all proteins. So, translation we generate proteins right. So, they will be synthesized they will be regulated at gene level. This cytosolic multi enzyme complexes what do they do actually? First thing they are remaining close. So, energy is economized. Nature sees that where to where wherever possible it can it should conserve the energy. So, if next someone tells you 
to conserve energy actually you should take it seriously because that is the rule of the nature and yes since they are lying close they are also very well coordinated okay this ump and cmp after formation they also competitively inhibit omp decarboxylase so that is another way of regulation apart from that purine and pyrimidine nucleotide biosynthesis are coordinatedly regulated you can see in this figure how things are happening so they are well coordinated so purine synthesis at times is activating like atp here is activating the process of this pyrimidine synthesis whereas the end products of atp uh, sorry uh, this gtp can regulate adp synthesis that is atp synthesis and cross regulation is there atp can uh, enhance gtp synthesis but the end products they can uh, inhibit their own synthesis and uh, gtp can uh, inhibit this process of udp and cdp synthesis as well so that's how the pyrimidine and pure uh, purine synthesis they are also coordinatedly coordinately regulated so this was all about the de novo synthesis pathway similar to purine nucleotides pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis also has a salvage pathway where uridine and cytidine and deoxythymidine deoxycytidine they produce their respective nucleotides so they are salvaged from their metabolic pathways uh, from the intermediaries and form the nucleotides like uh, here also we are seeing cytosine from nucleoside we can also get cmp with the help of prpp so this is about salvage pathway now all that we have read about this pyrimidine synthesis where we can utilize this knowledge in our clinical field as doctors what we should be knowing so if you see the mechanism of action of allopurinol and 5 fluorouracil they act as alternate substrate for oprts so both this oprts is phosphoribosyl transferase so phosphoribosyl group are added to this group uh, drugs particularly allopurinol is converted to a nucleotide in which ribosyl ribosyl phosphate attaches to n1 of pyrimidine ring fine so that's how they regulate the pyrimidine synthesis part so where what are the clinical syndromes or diseases they are related to pyrimidine synthesis particularly one disease we take up that is orotic aciduria that can be of two types type 1 and type 2 not very uh, widely seen in indian context yet some studies have been shown so type 1 is basically oprts or omp decarboxylase deficiency type 2 is only omp decarboxylase deficiency these are autosomal recessive disorders so some inborn disorders they can also be seen secondarily accompanied by in ray syndrome so uh, this when you come uh, go to your clinical years you will come across just remember ray syndrome it is associated with hepatic encephalopathy etc then allopurinol competitively inhibits orotic acid metabolism 6 aziridine also accumulates orotic acid by inhibited inhibiting orotidylate decarboxylase so this is a drug that can also give rise to orotic 
aciduria similarly urea cycle disorder uh, if it is there secondary to it this ornithin transcarbamylase deficiency can also lead to urotic aciduria fine so what happens in this disease urotic aciduria obviously as the name suggest urotic acid is formed in excess that is the final pyrimidine nucleotides are not synthesized urotic acid accumulates and gets excreted in the urine so uh, there is over period of time there is failure to thrive in the child retarded growth and megaloblastic anemia is also seen so no patient will come and present before you that i am having urotic aciduria you have to see the patient see its clinical signs and symptoms and then you have to think about multiple diagnosis that is known as differential diagnosis then you have to see uh, which disease is mostly coming under this uh, suspicion and you can have your backdrop of knowledge that yes if from the peripheral smear i am getting a picture of megaloblastic anemia then and with retarded growth etc in a child it might be urotic aciduria so you go on giving vitamin b12 folic acid nothing happens because it is the problem is somewhere else so <clears throat> hyperammonia if associated you can think of urea cycle disorder but the vice versa is never true in urotic aciduria urea cycle is not affected but in urea cycle disorder that you might see urotic aciduria so you must have a clear concept about this so um the diagnosis is done by umps g and treatment is by feeding with cytidine or uridine uridine in the form of uridine monophosphate or uridine triacetate it bypasses the initial enzymes and gets utilized in the <coughs> synthesis of pyrimidines so uh, why there is megaloblastic anemia now you can make out that purines and pyrimidines are not synthesized so dna rna is not properly synthesized nucleus is immature yet cytosol is uh, in uh, the cell is growing but it is on the erythrocytes are not able to mature properly so megaloblasts are seen in the peripheral smear so that is how megaloblastic anemia takes place so this is for you you can follow this video lecture on my youtube channel and you can find my powerpoints on my website vpacharya.com